Jason Kidd, and he joins us now. Jason, it's Michael and Don. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How's everything going? Things are going well. Do you agree with what Darren said, that this is a chance for you guys to really flex your muscle here in New York? Uh, well, it gives us an opportunity. We'll be uh, the only NBA team playing in the playoffs. But, um, you know, we have to take care of business and, and just take one game at a time and uh, stay focused. Did you have the same feeling when you played and went to those finals in New Jersey? Uh, I was more worried about who we were playing, so I didn't care what was written or said. Um, I was just more focused on our opponent. All right, are you focused on your first-round opponent? I know you're not going to tell me who you'd rather play, but would you rather play either the Bulls or the um, or, or, or what's Toronto? Or Toronto. Toronto. I'm sorry. Yes. No, no I, I'm not focused on. I got two games left. I have uh, New York. I have the Knicks tomorrow, and we uh, have the end of season in Cleveland. So right now. Uh, I'm just focused on the Knicks and for us to try to get better tomorrow. Anything you feel you need or can accomplish in these last two regular season games to get ready for the playoffs? Well, you know, we can definitely work on different situations uh, in the game, um, ATOs, um, different things that we can probably uh, look for, you know, coming from either Chicago or Toronto. But, you know, basically just trying to get better ourselves, uh, you know, when we play tomorrow and then also uh, Wednesday in Cleveland. Jason, I'm curious, this will be your first foray into the playoffs as a coach, and you played for several coaches going into the playoffs. Do coaches coach differently in the playoffs? Are they a little tighter? Are they a little bit more strict? Will you change when your team goes into the playoffs? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think sometimes uh, things are, are tightened or, you know, maybe – um, the coach might tighten up a little bit, but I think more or less I've been around coaches that try to continue to be themselves, you know, just like in the playoffs, but basically go over the small details um, because those are the things that win series. Those are the things that win playoff games, and, and at the end of the day, those are the things that win uh, a championship. So basically for me it's just to try to keep going over the little things and and understand that we can't change who we are. We need to just be who we are and, and play at a high level. Are you confident you can push Garnett in the playoffs? Uh, am I confident that I can play Garnett in the playoffs? Push or just push him, that he can play every day for you? Oh, yeah. I, I, have, uh, I think that he'll be there every day. He'll post. Uh, he's a competitor, and this is the you know best time of the year for, for any athlete to, uh, you know, playoffs to, try to achieve that one goal, and that's to win a championship. Will this team, I mean, are you, you guys entering this saying, hey, we're good enough to win a championship, or are you too um, inexperienced? Uh, for the most part, you have experienced players, but there are some young players as well where you're just saying, hey, let's just take it a series at a time. No, well, we're just going to take it one game at a time, but our goal is to, like, you know, the other teams that are, are fighting is trying to win a championship, and so um, we'll take one game at a time, and we'll start, you know, this journey on the road. Um, and so, you know, we got to find a way to win a game on the road. But, you know, that's a little bit too far in advance right now. we got to, you know, figure out how to beat the Knicks and, and get better tomorrow. Are you surprised you've gotten as much as you've gotten out of Plumlee and how big he has been for you? Uh, he's been great. Um, you know, from this summer to this point, he's grown um, again. You know, he should make, uh, you know, the all rookie team. Um, he's been very important to uh, our success, uh, especially with KG being out. But for his credit, to be able to listen and have someone like KG uh, talk to him about what it means to be professional and to work every day, um, you know, it's just it's great to see a young player uh, develop like Mason has. Jason, uh, how tough was it to keep this team together after the rough start? Then you lose Brooke Lopez, Kirilenko you didn't have for a lot of the season, Garnett you haven't had for most of the last month and a half. How tough was it to keep the ship straight? Well, you give our owner and our GM a lot of credit. They, you know, we didn't make any big changes after the slow start uh, and then also the injuries. Um, you know, you, you look at um, just, uh, you know, they made two little trades. Um, in a sense, you know, bring Teague over, and then also um, later on they bring Thornton, and so um, they easily could have uh, blown it up. But you know, they had trust and faith in the guys and the coaching staff to uh, get things turned around, and, and we did. Is it fair that one of the turning points in this season was the decision you made with Lawrence Frank? Uh, 
I, you know, that that's uh, you know something that the the you know corporate uh, the Nets had to make a decision, and uh, we made it and and we moved on and we can learn from it. Um, but it's just you know just like anything else, you you sometimes have to make a decision that you might not know if it's gonna you know be good or bad, but you know you have to do it, and we did. Jason, you're not that far removed from playing. Do you still have the the urge? I mean, do you want to rip the suit off and get out there, or are you completely overplaying? I'm completely overplaying. Um, I, I enjoy watching the greatest athletes play this, you know, the game of basketball at a high level, and I'm I'm blessed to have a group of guys that I you know get to coach and be around every day. Um, they're incredible, so um, I'm happy that where I'm at and not sitting in that seat. I've heard in in sports though, especially in baseball that it's hardest for the people that were great players to actually become managers. So in your case, you were a Hall of Fame player. Do you expect players to be as great as you? Was that something that you had to overcome early where you're watching players that can't do things the way you did them? No, I, you know, it's um, I, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy um, sharing what I see. Um, I think um, KG um, said it best the other day. It's exciting to, to hear what or – Kind of, you know, when I give my vision of what I see or who's open, um, he said it best. You know, he enjoys um, hearing it from who he thought was one of the best at passing the ball, what he sees, who's open. And I'm trying to share that with my teammates and uh, my teammates with my guys. And, and for that, you know, seeing those guys out passing the ball, making the extra pass, it's exciting to see the game, you know, the basketball game that the Nets are playing because it's, it's fun to see multiple guys touch the ball. 